Is Saab's JAS-39 Gripen still the bargain of the 4-plus generation fighter market, or has that reputation been polished by selective accounting? Two recent public data points, Saab's own modeling is presented via Aviation Week in 2023 and a 2023 Czech Ministry of Defense budgeting analysis prepared when Prague weighed Gripen E-F against the F-35A, offer a clean way to probe the question. The numbers do not perfectly align, and that is the story. Depending on the lens, a Gripen flight hour can look closer to the low 20s in thousands of dollars or drift into the mid-30s. The gap is not a scandal, it is a masterclass in how definitions, scope, and fleet context move, cost per flight hour, more than brand promises ever will. The Saab slash Aviation Week approach is an engineering style benchmark. It imagines a mature force of 100 aircraft flying 200 hours per jet per year over 37 years, then decomposes the hourly figure into an operations bucket, people, fuel, ground support, and a maintenance bucket, spares, consumables, repair labor, logistics. Under those controlled assumptions, Gripen C-D appears at roughly $20.6 thousand dollars per hour and the larger systems Gripen E-F at about $22.1 thousand dollars. The shape of that outcome tracks what the airframe was built to do, keep mass down, simplify access panels, minimize turnaround time, and sip fuel. On this grid, rivals like F-16V, F divided by a minus 18 E divided by F, Rafale, Eurofighter, and especially F-15EX and F-35A generally land higher. The Czech calculation answers a different question, what will a small nation actually spend each year to own, arm, and fly a 24-jet fleet through its life? Take that annual bill, spread it over a 200 hours per aircraft baseline, and the implied hourly cost for Gripen E-F rises into the $36k range, with the F-35A near the high 40s. Here, the relative ordering remains intuitive, Gripen below F-35, but the absolute value is higher than Saab sanitized comparator. Why? Because national budgets capture realities that benchmark models, by design, quarantine, initial spares buy-in, training pipelines, infrastructure and tooling, sovereign modifications, obsolescence management, software update ecosystems, and often ammunition and weapons packages that are absent from pure flying hour math. Every cost model is a boundary drawing exercise. Shift the boundary and the hourly result changes. Include weapons procurement and you will inflate the numerator for any type that arrives with an advanced, expensive armament suite. Load in depot stand-up, data links, secure comms, cyber hardening, and mission data reprogramming, and the costs follow. Conversely, limit the scope to what a squadron's ops officer sees on a fuel slip and a line maintenance board, and the Gripen's design thesis shines, quick turnarounds on short strips, modest fuel burn, and sparse manning requirements. None of these framings is wrong, but using one to argue against the other is a category error. Utilization is the silent lever. Hourly cost is a fraction, fixed and semi-fixed costs sit in the numerator and flight hours in the denominator. If a nation struggles to generate 200 hours per jet, due to pilot throughput, weather, parts, or budget ceilings, its apparent hourly cost rises, even if the airplane itself is efficient. Push utilization well beyond 200 and unit cost may fall until heavier inspection cycles trigger more downtime and part spend, flattening the curve. Small fleets are particularly sensitive to this math, a handful of spare engines, specialized test sets, or unique munitions lots can dominate the cost picture when spread over few tails and few hours. Another nuance is variant maturity. The E-F is not merely a warmed-over C-D, it carries more power, greater electrical capacity, a new sensor suite, and growth for advanced weapons and electronic warfare. Those attributes deliver operational capability, but they also tend to raise maintenance depth and parts pricing. Saab's own comparative figures acknowledge a step up from C-D to E-F. 
In national budgets, the delta can widen further if a customer is transitioning from an older fleet and must capitalize new depots, simulators, and training syllabi for the E-F from a cold start. Early years of any new type often look more expensive per hour until the logistics system and local industry find their rhythm. What about the broader field? Even allowing for methodological drift, the relative picture is fairly stable in public estimates. Heavy twin-engine designs with large radar apertures and high thrust levels predictably sit higher on the cost curve. Agile single-engine types trend lower. The F-35A complicates this heuristic. It is single-engine, yet its stealth coatings, software ecosystem, sensor fusion, and sustainment architecture introduce cost drivers that push it up the ranking. Gripen's lineage, small, maintainable, optimized for dispersed operations and road bases, anchors it near the bottom in most apples-to-apples -apples comparisons. That positioning does not evaporate when the frame widens to entire life cycles, it is just moderated by the realities of national ownership. Buyers, therefore, should treat cheapest to fly as a hypothesis to test rather than a slogan to accept. The right way to do that in 2025 is to run two views in parallel. First, use a standardized comparator, Saab slash Aviation Week style, to see how Gripen stacks against peers when all fly the same, mature profile. Second, build a cash-based, country-specific model that loads in weapons, basing, sovereign mods, training, and IT slash crypto sustainment, sized for the actual fleet and the actual flying hours. Where both models agree is more important than where they diverge. Where they diverge, the gap tells you which assumptions are doing the most work, and which program levers, utilization, basing, industrial participation, offer the best savings. For planners, a pragmatic 2025 rule of thumb emerges. If the question is cross-type benchmarking or quick order of magnitude estimates for fuel and line maintenance, treating Gripen C-D as roughly low 20s and E-F as low 20s to mid 20s per hour remains defensible. If the question is full-fat budgeting for a small fleet with modern weapons and sovereign infrastructure in scope, expecting Gripen E-F to land in the mid 30s per hour is prudent, still under the F-35 as typical high 40s planning figure. Sensitivity testing should vary utilization, energy prices, and spares inflation by at least plus or minus 25%, because those three inputs dominate results far more than any brochure claim. The bottom line is less dramatic than a headline but more useful than a single number. Gripen's reputation for thrift is grounded in design choices that continue to pay dividends where squadrons live, on the ramp, in fuel trucks, and inside maintenance tents. Yet national treasuries do not pay for design philosophy, they pay invoices that bundle hardware, training, weapons, and the plumbing of modern air warfare. On that ledger, Gripen remains competitive, just not magically exempt from the cost gravity that pulls on every advanced fighter. Wise customers will keep both pictures in view, and make their decision with clear eyes about what per flight hour really means for their fleet, their basing, and their ambitions.